That will be the name of the bucket. Okay, and this is the free five gigabyte bucket that you get with an app engine. Um, the next step is you have to generate an, uh, a service account. So you go to cr credentials here and you say create new client ID. And then you say a service account. And you say create client ID. Okay. Once you, that's done, it's going to download a file down here. And it said hello world. Jason. So it's generated a private key for the service account. You will never see that private key uh, again, and so it's important to save the file. So that's a JSON file. What we need is a P12. Okay. So we are going to generate that P12. Okay. And it creates this P12, which is a way of storing a key, and it has a password. The password is not a secret. So, so now we have a private key. We can use this private key to connect to Google Cloud Storage. Okay. Um, but it's in the wrong format. So App Engine, the App Engine development server, expects a PEM file. And this is a P12 file, so we have to convert it. Um, PEM? PEM. And so we what, have a P12. And we have a P12. So what I'm going to do is run this command. I am going to cap that file, which is hello something dot P12. So I said cat hello something dot P12 into OpenSSL, which is a program which can convert keys for you and along with other things. Um, and then I say that's the format PKA CS12. And then dash no DDS, dash no certs, dash pass in. The pass is not a secret. That's the secret that they told us. And then I pass it into this RSA thing, which will generate the PEM file for us. Okay. Um, this is kind of described in their docs. Uh, if I can find it. What's the extension on that file? P12. Okay, so it's kind of described in here somewhere. Uh, easy. Yes, it's easy. Undocumented 12-step process. It's no problem at all. Uh, somewhere in here it talks about it. Uh, convert the private key to a PEM format by following these instructions. Click that, and it tells you how to do that. Okay, so I'm doing what this thing's telling me to do. Just this. Uh, it confusingly tells you to do these things. You don't need to do those things. You just need to do this. Thing. Um, so that's what I'm going to do, and I'm going to save it to my desktop as gcs.pem. Uh, so, great, it wrote that file. So if I look at that file, I'm actually not going to look at it. There's a private key in there. I don't want to share that with everybody. Um, if I use that as part of my auth server, uh, as part of my dev server, I can connect to the Google Cloud Server bucket, the Cloud Storage bucket. Uh, from my local computer. When you upload your app to App Engine, it can get the credentials needed to access the bucket from the App Engine service. And so you don't necessarily have to have these credentials. Okay? In other words, the App Engine server is allowed to connect to this bucket. But my local machine is not. And so that's why we have to create those credentials so that I can do that. Otherwise, you would not be able to test your code locally, which would suck. So, um, Okay, so I've created this, this PEM file and saved it in, in desktop. And so if I go to, I have a storage example here, standard app YAML. Um, the way we start this server is like this. So I'm in my storage example folder. There is this command. Okay, you say you run the dev app server directly with the current folder, you give it an app identity email address. That's that thing. So look, actually, that's the wrong one. So let me put the right one in there. I get that from here. Yeah, that's the right one. It's this address, this email address. 
So I'm going to put that in there. And then the second part it takes is the GCS DM. And now it's going to run the app server and it's going to use those uh, credentials to, to be able to access stuff on, on, the, app, on the Google Cloud Storage. Okay? Um, and so now I should be able to run my code. Okay, so here's a put. Um, what I'm going to do is create a file on app engine, or sorry, on cloud storage inside of this bucket. So this is the soft context we've been seeing. Uh, this is my app ID, which is the astute curve or whatever. Um, you can always keep your app ID this way. You don't have to hard code your app ID. Um, and then I add .appspot.com to the end. The reason I did that is that's the name of my bucket in here. So I just did that. There is a function inside of, uh, inside of the App Engine libraries in the, in the file package. You can say file.bucket name. As far as I can tell, that doesn't actually work. So use this instead. Um, then I have to create an HTTP client. And what this does is it's going to do all the communication. It's going to make it so that when I try to pull a file from App Engine, it's going to pull it using this HTTP client. This is a built-in GoFit. It's in the net HTTP library. We haven't really talked about it, but just, so the HTTP library, you can serve, you can use handle and serve, you can start a listen, uh, sorry, start an HTTP server, listen and serve request. You can also make outbound requests. You can say, go get google.com, and it will make a get request as if it were a browser, okay? And that's called an HTTP client that lets you do that. So we have to create one of those that it's going to use. And the HTTP client has this ability where instead of just connecting directly to the internet over your operating system's network stack, you can give it this transport, and it will use that to do the connection. And so we have to create this OAuth2 transport. This is a way of authenticating with Google. Okay. And so it takes, and this is, this is stuff I copied out of their uh, example. Um, so the source is this token source. Okay, and that's what makes it uh, use the authorization of the app engine. So it's like as if app engine was connecting to the bucket. That's what this is doing. And this is saying use the URL fetch library, which we haven't talked about, which we'll talk about later, uh, which makes it so that app engine can connect to the outside world. Okay, so source is like, hey, the client is coming from this domain IP. Yeah, it's like the authentication part. Um, it's who, who it is. And then transport is uh, is is how what's what's transport do again? It's it's how the HTTP request is made, right? So it's it's like a you know how you have like a Wi-Fi and Ethernet. It's kind of like that. It's that layer below that allows the request and response to happen. And so we create a new transport. This so the client to you you just do a GET request, and it looks like you just did a GET. But actually, what it's doing is doing OAuth two and connecting and adding headers and all kinds of stuff. That's an object and an object there. Yeah. I think I found out why we're failing. Their uh, cloud storage thing says you are required to have billing enabled for your account in order to go the one you use it. Okay. Even if you don't use the billing. Even if you're not using it. You have to have your credit card information in the thing. Okay. That's why it's not working. All right. We'll back up and we'll try that in a second. Well, or not. You I guys can use my credit cards. <laughs> <laughs> Just, just, just a warning, Caleb, before you push code or before you do these videos, your keys in these. I told her to hold, not upload that video, but, but don't push any code. You know, it's time to start think, thinking about the fact that your authentication code might be in your There's no keys code. Here. Okay. There is on this page. <laughs> well, right, but. But this is For a videos, hell of a I mean, you might want to hold videos until you delete that key, or you might want to, you know, you're, you're talking about the email key that he showed us in that. The, the key that to his cloud storage account that anybody who sees it can upload stuff. Yeah. This is like a hell of a world app that has no, uh, you yeah, know, I'll delete it after we're done. But it's, yeah. Well, right. But I'm trying to be careful not to release my, my own keys for my own websites, but so far I don't think I've done that. What he's saying is, if you go here, these this is can be information. Well, actually, 
No, actually nothing's revealed here. Uh, because you have to have the private key. You know I have this file, but I haven't shown you the contents of this file. So I haven't revealed that yet. Okay, so you do that after the video's off? Or never. <laughs> uh, uh, so, but, but, uh, uh, a nice try, though. <laughs> no, 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 absolutely. It's a totally, it, it, this is a dangerous thing that we're, we're doing here because of that potential. Um, so, this is really complicated, and we still have many more steps to Let's go. Let's go. Let's do uh, it. <laughs> part of the reason it's so complicated is because making something easy also makes it really easy to hack. Okay? And when you're in a large company that's making a serious website, it's no longer, oh, we need to make the lives of developers as easy as possible. It's, we need to make sure that nobody ever breaks into us. And part of that means making the developers life a little harder. Because it's really hard for me, I can't just give you a username and password. I gotta give you this private key file, right? I have to set up a service account. I gotta add you to the buckets. I have to do all these steps because it's controlling access, like making it really hard. And that makes your security engineer really happy. Right? And so it's like, Oh, it makes a developer harder, but it makes I'm a serious business better, right? That's the... So, part of S3 is, yeah, it is a little easier, but you're also not supposed to do it the easy way in S3 either. You're supposed to use a service called IAM. You're supposed to create users in that. You're supposed to use uh, service accounts and not user, like your developer account. And so, if you were doing it properly in S3, it actually would be just as painful. Um, so. Excuse me, you said you create service accounts that's right. So rather than have an application run as me, I make it run as itself, and I isolate what that application is allowed to do, so that my that application can't log into my Gmail, but I can log into my Gmail. And so that's a security hole in our product. If my because if somebody breaks into this machine, they log into the machine. That means that machine can do anything that my user account could do, and that's so we try to isolate it, make it only do the very smallest bit of what it can do. Right. So all this can do is access that one bucket. It can't access any of the other buckets. It can't access other applications in my account, et cetera. Um, but it is brutally painful, okay? And I wish it were this painful, but it just is. And like I said, it's not super well documented. So finding this code is, is kind of difficult. Um, but it is what it is. Okay. So we create our, our client, and that's what's going to allow us to connect to Cloud Storage. We have to create it like this. Um, you can pretty much just copy and paste this bit of code. Uh, this might change. So this is saying that I can rewrite copies. You might just be read old. But otherwise, you can just copy and paste this bit of code. If you've set up the dev identity thing that I showed you with the Python server, then it will use that file to do this part. Um, okay. Once you have that, you can create a cloud context. So, I called it CCTX, Cloud Context. You say cloud.newcontext, you give it the app ID here. I think that's supposed to be. But, uh, and then the HTTP client. And then you can use that to do our new writer. Right? So this is the same as we saw before. So like I said, this part is pretty straightforward, and this part is not. Okay? Uh, but you have to use the API once you can get this Cloud Context. So what this is going to do is create a file inside of that bucket called example.next and write hello world to it. So if I go to slash put, that's what it should do. So let's see if that actually works. Okay, it says it's done. So let's look inside here. And there's example.next. So let's, uh, let's double check it, so I'll change the text to see if it's really working right. And uh, rerun it. Okay. Uh, 16 bytes, so it's totally uploading, okay? Um, so that's painful, but this is actually really easy. It turns out I can drag files to this bucket. Okay, and so, so what is that? Um, I don't have a file ready, but I could drag and drop a file in here and upload it. I can just download it. You saw me do that, right? Uh, and so you can work with this like it's a Windows Explorer or something, and that's handy. 
Um, and so it's easy to view what's inside of your bucket. This bucket is the app engine bucket. This is not my local development server. The reason I had to go through that crazy process is because this is uploading files to the actual bucket. Okay. Um, the alternative would be to not use Google Bot Storage locally, to use a file system. To just use slash temp as my folder. And then when I upload files, push into slash temp. The downside of that is you're not testing using cloud storage. And so when you do local development, you're not really running the app like it's run on App Engine, and that's kind of crappy. So, um, but given the pain of setting up all the private keys, maybe that's better. I don't know. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to try to make a simple app that just has a form that allows you to upload a file. Okay. And then lists all the files you've uploaded and lets you download one. Okay. And the way we're going to do that is I'm going to give you guys a key that you can use to upload files to a bucket. It won't be this bucket, it'll be another bucket. But just store. Okay. So we'll do that together. Not on video. <laughs> okay.